Most people are unhappy and poor. Most people lose at the game of life. If what everyone does does not work, why not try the opposite? If a recipe sucks, no matter how good of a cook you are, the dish sucks. A formula of failure is trying to please everyone. If you look at all successful people, you'll notice that they are always doing things differently than the average person. It doesn't mean you have to literally do everything different than normal people. Different is better when it is more effective or more fun, but you don't have to fix it if it's not broken. Today, we are going to talk about how thinking differently can benefit you in beating the game of life. Rules that change the rules. The author of the book The 4 Hour Work Week became the national kickboxing champion in China. He won by looking at the rules to find unexploited opportunities. There were two of them he found and executed. One. Cutting weight like a powerlifter. Because the weigh-in was one hour before the match, he decided to lose 28 pounds in 18 hours, and then hyperhydrating himself back to his weight to fight in a lower weight class as a heavy contender. 2. An unorthodox fighting style. With his weight advantage, he pushed every single one of his opponents off the ring, ending up winning every fight with a technical knockout. Ever since he became the champion, it is now normal to use these once unorthodox methods. Most elite high jumpers use diverse jumping techniques to clear the bar until Dick Fosbury won a gold medal in the 1968 Summer Olympics. Ever since Dick Fosbury won the gold medal, it is now normal to use the Fosbury flop. Sports evolve when the standard is being challenged. The same counts for life. Here are the 10 rules that's contrary to popular belief that you need to understand in order to beat the game. 1. Retirement is the worst case scenario insurance. Retirement should not be the final goal. Instead, it is more like a life insurance for the absolute worst case scenario. First of all, the whole concept of retirement is based on the assumption that you do things that you don't really like during the period of your most physically fit years just to have money when you are old and have no energy. Secondly, building up enough capital to sustain a retirement that is above poverty level is mathematically impossible for most people. Inflation lowers your purchasing power 2-4% to every single year. The math usually just don't work out. Thirdly, if the math does work, it means you're one hardworking machine that when you get to your first week of retirement, you'd be so bored that you want to find a new job anyways, which in the end defeats the whole purpose of retirement. Interest and energy are periodic. If someone offered you $10 million to work 24 hours a day for 15 years straight and then retire, would you do it? Of course not. You'd be dead in no time. Alternating activity periods and rest is necessary to survive. Instead of working 40 years and then have a long retirement, you should take mini retirements throughout your life instead. You will become more productive when you work and also live a more enjoyable life at the same time. Doing less is not laziness. Or better formulated, doing less meaningless work does not mean laziness. Rather, it allows you to do more meaningful things that are more important to you. For most people, this is hard to accept because our society praises those who self-sacrifice. Most people use the amount of hours they've dedicated as a measurement of their own contribution to a company instead of the actual difference they've made. What you should really do is focus on being productive and not busy. The real definition of laziness is when you live a non-ideal existence and let your faith be decided by circumstance or decided for you by others while you see your life pass by as a spectator from an office window. The timing is never right. Forget about pros and cons. The timing is never right for anything. The universe doesn't conspire against you, but it also doesn't go out of its way to line everything up for you either. The conditions are never perfect. If something is important to you and you always wanted to do it, just do it and correct the course along the way. It's better to make mistakes and fix them later than trying to prevent making mistakes. As for forgiveness, not permission. People will deny things on an emotional basis only when you ask for permission, but they'll accept it after you've already done it. When you tell your friends and family about starting a business, they might tell you that it won't work out or it's just too risky, but when you are already doing it, they will be hesitant to go out of their own way just to stop you. The art is to learn how to ask for forgiveness when it doesn't work out. Emphasize strengths, don't fix weaknesses. Most people are good at some things, and utterly horrible at other things. Our society is obsessed about fixing weaknesses. We are taught in school that if you are good at languages but horrible at math, you should probably focus on getting better at math grades. The reality is that fixing weaknesses only lead to incremental improvement, while enhancing your strengths often provide a multiplier effect. It is always better to be great at something than be mediocre at everything. 
My partner personally doesn't enjoy doing voiceovers at all, therefore he invited me to join in on self-improvement as a partner doing the voiceovers. This way he can focus on what he's really good at, which is video animation, instead of trying to be better at something he doesn't look forward to. This decision has allowed him to be able to improve himself at something he does look forward to. Things in excess becomes their opposite. Simplicity is the key. More becomes less, too much, too many, and too often turns things into the opposite. Having a few alcoholic drinks makes you feel great. Excessive amount of alcohol makes you feel terrible. Working out 15 minutes a day makes you feel energized. Working out for 5 hours every single day makes you exhausted. Sleeping for 6 to 8 hours a day makes you feel refreshed. But then again, sleeping for 10 to 12 hours a day makes you feel lazy. Money alone isn't the solution. Deep down, we all know that money doesn't really exist, but it is the fact that we all participate in this game that makes it relevant. Most people think that money is the solution to all of their problems, and to be very honest, I was one of them. But in reality, money deludes them so that they can avoid the real problems. Don't let money be your only goal. Relative income is more important than absolute income. What is important is not the amount of money you earn, but rather how efficient you earn it. You have to measure both time and money. For example, someone who earns $2,000 a month working 5 hours a week is a lot richer than someone who is earning $5,000 a month working 40 hours a week. The stress is bad. You stress is good. There is a common belief that stress is bad for you, but really, it depends on the type of stress. When you work your ass off doing things that you absolutely hate, that is what causes distress. Negative stress that is bad for your health. You stress, on the other hand, is a good type of stress when you intensively work on things that give you a feeling of fulfillment and purpose. The you in you stress means good in Greek, just like the word euphoria. This is the exact same for criticism. Criticism itself is not bad, it really depends on the type of criticism. Constru Destructive criticism is great, it's good, but then again, destructive criticism is not. Found this an interesting way of thinking? To learn how to beat the game with practical step-by-step -step instructions, I recommend you to read the book The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. You can find an Amazon affiliate link down in the description below where you can purchase the book. In order to improve yourself every day, it is important to expose yourself to high quality information that you can get from books. But with so many distractions nowadays like social media, Netflix, and video games, it requires a lot of willpower and focus to grab a book and actually read it. If you are one of these people, I highly recommend you to start listening to audiobooks. With the Audible.com mobile app, you can plug in earphones and expose yourself to books while doing day-to-day -day things such as chores, walking, traveling, working out, and even while playing video games. We at self-improvement have teamed up with Audible to bring you a special offer to try Audible. Click on the link in the description below and sign up for a free trial and get your first two audiobooks for free. If you end up disliking the service, you can cancel it at any time and the audiobooks are yours to keep. These were the 10 rules to beat the game and how everything popular is wrong. Have you ever done something that was seen as unorthodox but ended up getting better results than the orthodox? It would be awesome if you would share your story with us in the comments down below. Did you find this video helpful? Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications to get notified when a new self-improvement video is up.